Summary of The Secret by Rhonda Byrne Introduction You are what you eat is a catchy diet slogan, but the far more accurate truth is that we are what we think. That might make you think of empty, happy catchphrases like think good thoughts or just be happy. But the value of controlling your thought life transcends trendy slogans. In fact, the power to choose what we put into our minds is so significant, it can impact our entire future. So through the course of this summary, we'll investigate that mysterious secret to success that everyone's always looking for. And you'll learn how to apply it to your own life. By unpacking the universal law of attraction and how you can manipulate that rule to benefit you, you'll learn why you should treat yourself, why you shouldn't always fight for what you want, and why the secret is similar to quantum mechanics. Chapter 1. The Law of Attraction The secret is ultimately the story of someone who, like many people, was dissatisfied with her life. She felt overworked, unfulfilled, and unappreciated, and she came to the conclusion that there must be more to life than this. If you've guessed that that person was the author, Rhonda Byrne, you're correct. So in her effort to seek a more meaningful life, she started doing her homework to find out what other people had to say about the secret to success. By consulting a variety of texts, everything from The Science of Getting Rich to the works of Ralph Waldo Emerson, William Blake, and Plato, she discovered that a number of the world's most notable thinkers and philosophers all had one thing in common, their reference to the law of attraction. Naturally, this motivated Byrne to learn more. And she found that the law of attraction is considered to be one of the most powerful principles of the universe because it informs every facet of your existence. Positing that what you put out into the world is what you'll receive in return, the law of attraction affirms that if your impact on others is comprised of anger, negativity, and selfishness, life will reward you only with more things to be frustrated about. By contrast, if you actively seek to promote kindness, positivity, and gratitude, the universe will reward you with positive things. Put simply, you attract what you tend to think and feel. And if we accept that principle, then it follows naturally that this principle is already affecting our lives at this very moment. But if we know that, then we can choose to do something with this information. We can make a conscious effort to be aware of what we put into our minds and how our thoughts are influencing our mental and emotional health. And the best part is that you don't have to wait for anything in order to get started. You can take those positive, life-changing steps right now. Chapter 2 the Principles of Quantum Mechanics Although our problems vary in their unique specifics and circumstances, if we had to boil it down, we could safely surmise that all problems stem from focusing on don'ts instead of do's. Whether that's what we don't want, don't have, or don't do, these don'ts fuel our problems and they keep us stuck in a rut. But the law of attraction doesn't really acknowledge don'ts. Instead, it focuses on the overall message you're putting out into the universe, as if the word don't was deleted from your sentence. For example, if you're thinking, I don't want to fail this exam, what the law of attraction comprehends is, I want to fail this exam. That's why it's crucial that you avoid putting out negative energy. You can revamp your thought life by replacing that negative energy with a positive message. Instead of concentrating on what you don't want, Project, I want to pass this exam, or I want to accomplish my goal. You should also be highly specific where you can. So focus on adding extra details like, I want to accomplish my goal of getting that promotion this year. This principle can be applied on a global level as well as a personal front. For example, instead of protesting against war, people should rally for peace. If we want to reduce the negative impact of substance abuse, we should avoid anti-drug campaigns and instead raise positive awareness for sobriety. By projecting what we do want instead of what we don't, we can increase the amount of positive energy in the universe and promote change. But now that we've established this, let's take a closer look at how the laws of attraction work and why it doesn't respond to don'ts. In practice, it operates in a similar fashion as the laws that govern quantum physics. One of the central premises of quantum mechanics is that if you narrow down the complexities of the universe to its most minute and basic levels, what you're left with is energy. Because energy vibrates at certain frequencies, things that vibrate on the same frequency 
are drawn to each other. That's how natural attraction works, and it's the principle that governs the law of attraction. Changing your thoughts addresses that principle because you're altering the frequency and vibration of the energy you put out into the universe. So, when you change the things you spend the most time thinking about, you're altering your primary frequency and thus telling the universe what type of energy you want to attract. Chapter 3. Create the Universe You Want to Live In To flesh out our previously discussed concept of the energy you attract to yourself, let's consider an example. Pretend your mind is like a TV transmission tower, but instead of TV channels, you are broadcasting your thoughts and desires into the universe. But just like a transmission tower, you're not just sending something out, you're receiving something as well. So if you don't like what the universe is sending you, maybe it's time to change the message you're putting out. The power to alter the message you're sending and what you receive in life means that you are the creator of your own universe. You have the power to do something about any situation you're unhappy with. So let's take a look at three key steps you can change to change your world. The first step is to ask for what you want. Be clear about what you want and make your request by following this simple, specific structure. Start by using the present tense and making a statement of gratitude, speaking as though what you want is already yours. For example, you could say, I am so grateful to have my new promotion. This formula can, of course, be amended to suit any of your desires, whether you're seeking an experience, like recovering from trauma or becoming healthy, or something involving a person, like finding a supportive partner or the desire for your mother to beat cancer. It can also be practiced as many times as you like. Think of it like placing an order from the universe's catalog of positive things that can come to you. And once you've made your request, the next step is to believe. Keep the thought of what you want and your confidence in your ability to get it at the forefront of your mind and concentrate on radiating positivity and faith. You can think of this step as strengthening the signal you're broadcasting into the universe. Then the final step is to receive. Once you've done everything you can to effectively broadcast your desires, your next job is to sit back and wait for them to come to you. You can help the process along by using a mantra that supports and solidifies your goal. For example, you could practice saying something like, I am receiving now. I am receiving all the good in my life now. I am receiving, insert your desire here, now. A few times a day. Practicing this faith and positivity throughout your day will strengthen the good frequencies you're putting into the universe and help you to achieve what you want. Chapter 4. The Power of Visualization If you've ever tried to concentrate really hard on having positive thoughts, then you know how easy it is to develop a sudden anxiety about any negative thoughts that come your way. Why are they coming? How can you stop them? What if they hold back your progress? These and other questions are likely to flood into your brain. But don't panic. In fact, worrying about negative thoughts will only make them worse. So instead of indulging your worries or fearing the arrival of negative thoughts, simply let them come and go and channel your focus onto something good. One great way to do this is through visualization. Because no matter what you want, envisioning the positive final result is key for keeping your spirits up while you work on attracting what you want. By imagining what you want, what it will look like and feel like to have it, and what changes will occur in your life, you can give yourself a positive image to focus on. This, in turn, will redirect your thinking to the right frequency. And so will a few other helpful strategies, like reminding yourself that you deserve good things, especially in your relationships. Treating yourself with love, respect, and kindness you would give to other people can also help, because when you remind yourself that you're worthy of love, you're fine-tuning your positive frequencies and reminding the universe that this is what you think of yourself. Chapter 5. The Power of Positive Thinking If you've ever found yourself stress-eating or felt that you crave a certain thing anytime you're sad, then you know just how much our emotions can impact our diet and weight. And as with any other principle of the law of attraction, you can take control of these emotions too. Rhonda Byrne posits that most diets are ineffective because they concentrate on the negative and to encourage people to internalize those don't thoughts we discussed earlier. So because most diets are based on the principle of, I don't want to be fat, 
Burns suggests that they're basically encouraging you to think fat thoughts. So how do you reclaim this element of your thought life? Simply apply the strategies we've already covered and start replacing that mindset with thin thoughts. Instead of counting every little calorie you consume and worrying about your weight, concentrate on relinquishing these negative thoughts and the self-loathing they generate. This will help you to tap into the mentality of those people who seem to eat what they want and avoid gaining any weight. Because although they might have some factors on their side that they can't control and you can't cultivate, like a faster metabolism or a different genetic predisposition, they do have one trait that you can absolutely emulate. They don't worry about what they eat. So if you start by relinquishing your worries and instead focus on asking for your ideal body, you'll reach your goal a lot faster and avoid a lot of stress eating and negativity. This practice, combined with the development of some healthy food habits and a good exercise routine, will help you attract your healthiest self. Chapter 6. Cultivate Harmony If you've ever watched the Star Wars movies, you remember the multiple references to the Force and the character's belief that this Force guides both their life and the fate of the universe. This concept of a guiding force exists in multiple different forms and religions. Some people choose to think of it as God, while others identify it as karma. But the label you choose to give this force isn't as important as acknowledging that it exists. That's because the secret to success, and by extension, the law of attraction, is dependent upon an understanding of the universe and your place in it. So if you think of yourself as an energy force within the larger energy force of the universe, you can recognize the necessity of being in harmony with the universe. However, a lot of people fail to do this due to a number of misconceptions. Some people, for example, make a mistake of thinking that there isn't enough positivity or good luck in the universe, and that some people are simply unlucky or cursed. But this isn't simply a glass half empty approach to life. It's completely untrue. Because of the principle of the law of attraction, there's no such thing as limited happiness or people for whom things just don't work out. We all have negative circumstances in life and things we struggle with. But each of us also possesses the ability to change our future for the better. So try to combat these misconceptions with truth and focus on channeling your energy into manifesting a positive future. Another common misconception is resistance. This can best be summarized as a feeling that we have to fight for what we want or the idea that accomplishing our goals has to be a struggle. But that's not true either. While it's good to pursue your dreams in the face of adversity, there's a difference between refusing to give up and chasing something that just clearly isn't working. So pay attention to the vibe you get from your goals and your feelings as you pursue them. When they start to feel like a chore, it's time to give up and find something that makes you feel like you're following your bliss. Final summary. We often go through life wondering what the secret to success is or assuming it's a mystery that's only revealed to a chosen successful few. But the truth is that we all have the power to take control of our own future and create the world we want to live in. By simply acknowledging the power of the law of attraction and living into its principles, each of us can unlock the secret for ourselves and reap its benefits.